Welcome to my next video. This video, we're going to expand on media management slightly and we're going to look at dailies. Now, if you don't know what dailies are, dailies are things that are very prevalent on film sets and larger television production sets too. And I'm going to show you how to prep your dailies for your production. I have some media in this folder here and I have media, I have transcoded, and inside my transcode, I have some high res shots here. You'll also notice I've got another folder called proxy. There's nothing in it yet so far. What we're going to do, we're going to generate proxies of all of these files. These files are all uh, 1920 by 1080 um, HD 25 progressive. Okay, but this process would work via any uh, format or codec you're using. So if you're shooting UHD, um, 50p then we could we're going to downstep basically to proxy to make it easier in the offline edit so if we now go to resolve i'm going to make a new project and i'm going to call it dailies i'm going to hit create and it should boot us into the project of course you need to make sure that resolve understands what you're doing resolve doesn't know what to play back at he doesn't does it doesn't know the time you need to tell it okay so in our dailies we right click on the project project settings, and for the moment, I'm just gonna mess with this. So I need the timeline frame rate to be 25, and I want the playback frame rate to 25, and my video monitoring, really importantly, the monitor, the grade one monitors inside of you, if you have it, to be 1080p 25, because we're dealing with progressive media. And once we've got this set, hit save, and you can see format 1920 by 1080 25. Let's open that up. Okay, by now you should be pretty used to resolve. Now we're gonna be using a couple of these tabs today, first being the media. Now, this is um, uh, where we're gonna hunt for our media, here's the viewer, but of course the media needs to be in this section here, the media pool, otherwise Resolve won't utilize it. Now, here's our bin list. On master, I just wanna select and create uh, add bin, and I'm gonna call this, um, I'm gonna call this high res, okay? And I'm gonna go find that high res that I showed you earlier. And I'm just gonna to navigate to that, Media transcoded high res. There's our media here. You can see the metadata. I want to highlight and I want to drag it in, drag it into the media pool. And now, this will tell us what the format and the video codec is ProRes 422. Good. Hit save. Really important because it probably will crash at this point. Um, let's jump over to our edit page. Now, I don't really want to do any editing here. What I do is I want to create, I want to use Resolve to create my dailies. And the way I do that is I'm going to select my clips and I'm going to whack them on the timeline. Okay, and they'll all come down ins to outs all the way through. Now, there are a few things that I need to do in order to make these dailies. And the first thing is to uh, create a data burn in. Now, a data burn in is where we burn the metadata or some of the metadata onto these clips here. So if you go up to Workspace and go to data burn in, we can apply all of these different forms of metadata. I actually want to use source clip name and I want to use source time code. But of course you could put lots of different forms up here. You can create your own as well. Um, we can change the opacity of that background and we can change the size too, make it a little bit smaller and uh, we can move the positioning. But at the minute I'm fine with that. What you'll also see as we go through all of the clips now have their own clip name and time code of the source, not the time code of this timeline of the source of these clips here, okay? Good, that's the first pass. Second thing I wanna to do to make it easier for your offline editor to work with is that these have been shot um, S-log. Um, so let's just crunch them up a bit. Let's turn them a little bit more into the uh, Rec 709 world. So a little bit easier for them, to, for the uh, editor and director to deal with in the edit. And the way that we do that, we're gonna jump over to the color page. Here are all of our clips and we've got our node. Now, I don't wanna use the clip node here because that will just change the color of this, of the clip that I'm on. I wanna use a global color correction or a global LUT. And I wanna create that myself for all of these clips. Now, some of them aren't gonna match that well, but some of them will. It's just to get a mean average, that's all, okay? Now, I'm just gonna jump over into my timeline. Now, timeline will allow me to, with one LUT, apply that LUT all the way across these clips. 
If you hit Option S, now there's my node. And we're just going to go to Workspace, Video Scopes, and turn them on. Now we can see from these video scopes here that not particularly rich in terms of color range, and we can see it's wide dynamic range, so it's pretty thin. Okay, so let's just push this up slightly. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm always going to start with curves, and I'm just going to grab the top end whites and just going to bring them up slowly. Okay, maybe something around there. And I'm just going to pin these blacks back down actually a little bit there. Uh, I'm going to jump over to the color wheels and just make sure we're not in log here. Don't want to be in log. I want to be in primary's wheels. And I just want to increase the saturation a little bit. And I just want to increase the contrast. Nothing too extravagant. Now, let's just turn that on and off. So you can use option D for that. Okay, pretty good. Or you can use this symbol up here. Let's see what it's done to the rest of the clips. So, if we step through, you can see some of them are a little burning out, you know, a little bit much. I mean, but but overall it's okay, you know. That one's probably not great. You probably need to affect that separately. Um, that one's okay. That one's okay. To me, it's getting this a mean average. I mean, possibly on that clip, I might just jump back to clip and I might apply a little bit of rework on that clip. Just pull that back slightly, just so it's not burning out. Look at this one, and this one too, actually. I'm in clip, I'm just gonna drop that down. Okay, so no real massive reworks of color correction there, nothing, nothing huge. It's just a little tweak here and there. Ultimately, it's nice if you can use one global LUT, but in this situation, we can't. Let's go back to timeline. Let's turn these on and off. Okay, looking nice, a little bit brighter, looking good, looking sharp, a lot clearer, not opaque anymore, not that sort of opaque log CRS log look. So I'm happy with that. So we've now applied a LUT across those, those clips, your dailies. Let's say this is day one of your onset work, okay? And we've applied our data burn-in here and here. Now we want to export and render these shots out as proxies. Now we're gonna jump over to the um, delivery page. I'm now gonna to go to the custom area. I wanna browse a location. And we need to save these new renders somewhere. And they're going to go media, transcoded, and into proxy. That's the location these new renders are going to go in. Now, let's just have a little look at this. Render. We don't want it to be a single clip. That'll mean that all of these things will be one flattened file. We want them to be individual, okay? Let's have a look at the audio. Let me switch that to 24. File. Now, in the file, really important, you need to select source name, okay? Source name, not, and don't use unique file names. Really important that the, the name of this clip will relate to this naming here. Now let's look at the video. We want it to be quick time. Uh, I don't want to choose H.264. I want to keep the um, Apple ProRes flavor family, but I do want to knock it down to proxy, okay? So let's review that custom individual clip. QuickTime, ProRes, Proxy, Audio, 24-bit, File, Source Name, and we're ready to go. Now, you should have an orange bar all across all your shots. If not, uh, entire timeline, that means that all the clips are going to be exported from here all the way to there. Now, add that to the render queue. It'll jump over to here and start render. And these clips are now going to render out individually with their individual data burning and the LUT applied, all ready for your offline. Great, hit save. Let's just uh, command H and let's have a look at the finder level. And there we go. We can see from the high res, there's the naming convention there, matches exactly with the first clip of the proxy. Let's open the proxy up and we can see there's the look on screen, there's the data burning. Good, that's what we wanted. Clip two, good, excellent. Now, that's the end of the first part of this video. The next part will be, what do you do after your picture lock and how do you reconnect your proxies back to high res media in order for you to grade? But that'll be in the next video, thank you.